On tonight's No Things Considered, Miller vs. Acosta, Pets Are Killing the World, and it's Tim's birthday. Here's your host, Tim Young. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to No Things Considered. My name is Tim Young, and we've got a lot to get to today. In particular, it's my birthday. So, click the like button for once for my birthday as a gift. No, that got sad. All right, anyway, our first story tonight, Huma Abedin's email is coming under investigation because it appears as if, well, get this, the Clinton Foundation had a pay-to-play scam. Seems like something that was going on for a while and everybody kind of knew about it. Here to talk about it, the Daily Caller News Foundation's resident <laughs> pirate, Jack Crow. <laughs> this isn't awkward at all, Jack. Uh, did they collude with Russia? No. Who did the Clinton Foundation collude with? Everyone else. Well, that's fantastic. Hit the music, get him out of here. Thank you so much, Jack. That's Jack Crow. Thanks, Jack. Daily Caller News Foundation's resident pirate. Yesterday, at the White House news briefing, it was a battle of two, two guys. Jim Acosta and Stephen Miller. Let's not waste anyone's time. Get right into it. I will give, yes. Uh, what you're proposing, or what the president's proposing here, does not sound like it's in keeping with American tradition when it comes to immigration. The Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. You know what's amazing about that is that everyone's favorite Instagram teenage girl, Jim Acosta, had to read that off of his cell phone. Because he couldn't remember the little poem from the Statue of Liberty. And boy, you know, we set all of our policy based off of poems that are on statues around the country, right? Oh, man. By the way, uh, if you ever wondered, I thought the journalists that went to the White House press briefing, briefings were supposed to be non-biased. He's not even pretending anymore. Let's follow the drama. It's actually about a sweeping change to Surely, the Jim, you don't actually think that a wall affects green card policy. You couldn't possibly believe that, do you? Actually, the notion that you actually think immigration is at a historic law, the foreign-born population in the United States today, with the Jim, Jim, on Monday talk, talking about how border crossings. Do you really? I, mean, I want to be serious, Jim. Do you really at CNN not know the difference between green card policy and illegal immigration? Why? Why, why are you here? Do you want your wallet back? Yeah. yeah. Take these batteries, too. How did you get the batteries out of the... You are a pirate. Next clip. Are, I mean, are you really don't know that. Cuban immigrant. He came to this country in 1962, for, uh, right before the Cuban Missile Crisis, and obtained a green card. <laughs> yes. People who immigrated okay, to this so, country so Jim, can eventually... People who so Jim, immigrated to this country through, question, Jim. not through Ellis Jim, Island, as a factual, as Jim, as a factual question... Oh, it's family sharing time with Jim Acosta. And apparently he's running for office because he's sharing that touching story about his dad. Now listen, I don't... Great. His dad came to America. He got his green card from Cuba. Fantastic. That has nothing to do with Donald Trump's immigration policy or what's going on in the White House press briefing. <sighs> Stephen Miller handles it, though. He handles it like a champ. The people who've been hurt the most by the policy you're advocating are... What policy am I advocating? Apparently just unfettered, uncontrolled migration. The people have been hurt the most by the policy. What you're doing is, is for the people have been hurt the most by the policy the that you're. That the people who have been hurt the most by the policy you're advocating are immigrant workers and minority workers and African American workers and Hispanic workers. Are you targeting and it has African American no. community now. You brought it up again. You said you wanted to have a conversation and not target. Is it going to be a target? This is now? what we want to do. Using the African American community, are you going to target? I'm not trying to be funny. But right. Oh, she's not trying to be funny, but she is trying to steal that limelight back because Jim Acosta. He's not the only star there. April Ryan's got to jump in all the time. April has got to get that limelight on her. If somebody's going to attack the White House, it's got to be her, not Jim. Maybe they should fight it out first. In the prelims, they should arm wrestle and figure out who gets to go after the White House that day so that they both can share the spotlight and get talked about by The View the next day. Or Morning Joe. Depends on which one. Anyway, Stephen Miller handles her too. I know what you're saying. What you're saying is 100 percent correct. We want to help unemployed African Americans in this country and unemployed workers of all backgrounds get jobs. And insinuations like Jim made, trying to ascribe nefarious motives to a compassion immigration measure designed to help newcomers and current arrivals alike, is wrong. And this is a positive, optimistic proposal that says 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, 10 years, 20 years. Hey, listen, you weren't paying enough attention to Jim. Like, even though you were answering the questions that they were asking, he started whining that, you called me ignorant, you called me ignorant on TV. Well, don't be ignorant on TV then, man. That's, that's how it goes. Like, you called the White House lots of things. You called them awful things, in fact, over the past couple of months. But uh, I guess you whine when you get... It's a double standard. There's a lot going on. 
feel like you need to just drink to watch these White House press briefings nowadays. Or you know what else they, should, they could do? Just turn the cameras off. Because obviously they're just clamoring for camera time to, to get on TV. That's, that's what happened. You turn them back on, and the biggest whiner about the cameras being turned off is the biggest showboat when they go back on. Huh, Jim. I think that went exactly as planned. I think that was what Sarah was hoping would happen. I think that I think that was exactly what we were hoping to have happen. Thank you. That's the plan. Thanks. That's exactly what was supposed to happen. See, he came out and took the beating from Jim Acosta. Jim was so sleepy. He probably needed to go take a nap, call his girlfriends, see what happened, and see if he got enough screen time for the day. And he didn't have anything left for Sarah Huckabee Sanders. In fact, what what the hell happened for the rest of the press briefing? Nobody knows. It ended right there. We all watched it. We turned the channel off. You know, I think they set a Guinness World Record for how many times they said Jim in a short period of time in a White House press briefing. Yesterday, well, it was said a lot. And our fearless intern, Megan Flynn, made this awesome supercut video to show just how many times Jim Acosta's name was mentioned. Mm-mm. Jim Acosta's Jim, 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 let me put it this way. Stephen Miller could have done better. Acosta could not have done worse. Holy crap. Yesterday it seemed like Joe and Mika were a little, uh, a little off. Today it just seems like they're, well, oh, that's right. They're going after competitors, MSNBC, CNN, so they aren't friendly. Ah, uh, I get it. Okay, there we go. The rest of the panel didn't like what he had to say either. Uh, yeah, it was It was like, uh, Jim. G, you know, I agree with Jim Acosta and he's destroying his own argument. Destroying his own argument? Yeah, it actually, it did sound like he was destroying his own argument. In fact, Jim just went on a rant. It sounded like, have you ever been outgunned in a debate? Or have you ever tried to debate a little kid who had no information about what he was debating with you? Like, cheese is yellow because they color it yellow. No, it's not. It's because it comes from yellow cows. That's literally what it sounded like. And Jim just was staring off, just glistening in the light, the limelight that he desired at the White House press briefing now that the cameras are turned back on after he whined about it. MSNBC knows. Streets are watching. The moment that Acosta, I think, went into terrible territory was he was like lecturing Miller, quoting a poem that he doesn't know, so he was reading it from his, from, from his notebook, as though, as though he were, as though this were like a debate between him mm -hmm. And a public official, as, as, though, as, as opposed to being a journalist who was trying to tease out the difficulties and problems with the proposal. See, Morning Joe's analyst saw exactly what we saw there. He was literally trying to debate Stephen Miller as if it was a political debate. He brought up his dad in a dramatic story. He brought up a poem. He was talking about like kind of facts that didn't really make sense. It wasn't a, a journalist asking questions of the White House. It was just a guy that wanted to pick a fight. They lost. It sucks. Maybe they should send somebody else to the White House. Didn't we, didn't Dilly Kaur send somebody over to CNN recently? Didn't we move somebody to CNN that could be a White House correspondent? Yeah, I forget her name. I mean, Jim Acosta wing. did them a huge favor the for the base because that's uh, not only feeding into the narrative about the policy, feeds into <clears throat> the narrative about the press. Right. And at the same time, I'm going to speak in defense of Jim Acosta this morning because I don't think there's anybody on this set who hasn't gotten too personal during this presidency. And I don't think that's just our fault. It's fun to play pretend, Mika. It's fun to play pretend that the rhetoric and everything negative that's coming out of this presidency came from them. Because you guys have hated Donald Trump for like at least a year. Probably a lot longer than that. And I think maybe people here, when you're, when you're watching this right now, put in the comments how long you think the media has hated Donald Trump. I think it's been a long time. And this rhetoric has been building for a very long time. And so this picking of fights and this stress that's coming from the media is literally coming... Well, you could see it when they were too bad, so sad on election night, and they were crying on air about Hillary Clinton not winning. You could see it when they didn't worship the ground he walked on when Donald Trump took office, as opposed to like when uh, President Obama had his first press briefing, he was signing autographs and taking selfies. Where is this rhetoric and where is this fighting coming from? Not just your fault? I think it's pretty much all your fault. Now, granted, they'll, they'll fan the flames and they'll, they'll troll you back. But uh, at the White House, they will. Donald Trump, he loves that stuff. But you guys, 
you're kind of the cause of the problem. Next. I think this has been one of the most disturbing moments in history right. to watch this presidency and the, the cacophony of lies just spilling out every day. And that's on the record. Everyone can corroborate them that for themselves. But lost in the conversation yesterday was the policy mm -hmm. because it got so personal and so emotional on both sides. It was it. Who, who learned anything? Well, about and, the and, you know, every White House press briefing isn't about just policy and talking hard facts and being a professor. And then the cacophony of noise and lies coming from places. I mean, how many wrong stories have come out of the mainstream media over the past year? It's not just the White House's fault. Now, granted, they've done some stuff. For most of it, I mean, come on, Morning Joe. You guys jumped on everything. And remember that Russian collusion story that we still haven't proven yet and there's no evidence of and Donald Trump sanctioned Russia yesterday? Come on, you guys. Let's quit. Quit playing pretend. Uh, inside that press room, being berated, lied to, attacked every day. We've, we've certainly, we've already, you've heard around this set people talking about how he may have been delivering a speech instead of asking a question. We've talked about the negative side of it all. Uh, inside that press room, being berated, lied to, attacked every day. We what it's like in the press room, what it's like in the press room, it's gotta be the hottest ticket in town. This is, we should be on like August recess right now. It's super boring in town. There's no real, any stories going on in politics right now. It is so much fun to watch these reporters flail around in front of the White House. I, I'd love to go, I wanna go down there. Do I, how do I get into this? They let, a bunch of, they let uh, those crazy alt-white, right, alt-white, alt-right guys, same thing. Alt-right guys get in there. I should be able to get in there. I won't be throwing up this. See, we're good. It's fine. Get me a ticket. How do you get it? Do you get tickets? I don't know how politics or journalism works. Come on, I'm just a comic. Next, next clip. But on the other side of it, how hard is it when you see Stephen Miller going up there uh, with the preconceived notions for reporters sometimes not to um, let their emotions get the better of them? Reporters letting their emotions get the better of them. What are you, are you kidding me? They're, he's literally having a policy debate. They're supposed to be there asking questions about facts and getting facts out of things, not debating whether or not policy is good. That's not their job. I guess their emotions started to get the better of them on election night. Remember election night? You'd flip through any major network channel and see how sad and depressed everyone was when Donald Trump won and their hero Hillary Clinton didn't. That's when their emotions got the better of them and they haven't recovered from it yet. It's Trump derangement syndrome. Oh, man. Let's, let's, let's calm down a little bit. Let's change topics for a second. Because something important is going on in the world. NASA is hiring a planetary protections officer. Just one guy. Just one. In case aliens come down, we're going to have one guy. Maybe we'll give him a handgun. He'll stop him. Anyway, this is uh, pretty much what the interview process is going to look like. You need a partner. <laughs> I'm cool. I'll be his partner. Jay, wait up. Oh, appreciate the shot, man. Thought I'd never get out of that mail room. Lose the suit. Sure thing, partner. <laughs> they didn't say whether it had to be a human or an adorable talking pug, but, you know, I figure, hey, it's going to be one person protecting the entire planet from a race of aliens who have the technology to fly here across space. We're dead anyway. <laughs> you can just have a monkey. Just one person. One person, Donna. Fantastic. And finally tonight, according to Fizz.org, what the hell is Fizz.org? I guess one of the interns found it. It's fine. Dogs and cats, your very little pets, causing climate change. They're a big part of the problem of climate. I guess, uh, I guess China takes care of it because they're one of the number one polluters in the world, but they eat cats and dogs, so it balances out. Is that how it works? I don't know. You know what that reminds me of? This. Have you guys ever seen Hazelnut Dog? Look, it's my birthday today, so we're going to throw out with Hazelnut Dog. It's just the most creepy dog videos you'll ever see on Instagram. So we'll throw it out with that, guys. Thank you so much for watching tonight. No things considered. My name is Tim Young. We're here every night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Daily Caller Facebook page for breaking news and stories. Oh, my God. <laughs> Go to dailycaller.com, dailycallernewsfoundation.org. Click the like button. Click the heart button. Seriously? <laughs> this is not even, this is not normal. Uh, click the share button. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.